Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Samantha Beacott. I'm the president of the Saskatchewan Teachers Federation, and I'm joining you from Treaty 6 territory in the traditional lands of the Métis today. I want to thank you all for joining us uh, this afternoon um, and again, continuing to, to share our messages, the messages of teachers and students and parents from across the province. I, I want to say I am extremely disappointed that I am once again here to announce further sanction action. This is not how negotiations should be. We started negotiations in May with the expectation and commitment to come to the table in good faith and engage in true negotiations meaning there would be a back and forth discussion between all of the parties with the goal of coming to an agreement that was satisfactory for government, school boards, and teachers, and most of all, improve the conditions in our classrooms for our students. Despite this expectation, the SAS party government has at every opportunity chosen to take a different route. Over 10 days of bargaining and five days of conciliation, several rallies through the fall, over 30,000 emails this month, thousands of phone calls, and two days of province-wide strike. This government continues to refuse to negotiate on the items most important to teachers. Not only do they refuse to negotiate with teachers, the majority of SAS party government seems to be missing in action over the last couple of weeks. At a time when they should be finding solutions to ensure stability for students, their families, teachers, and for public education in the years ahead. Instead, they continue to ignore their responsibility. Many teachers even reported that their MLA constituency offices were closed on the last two days of strike. Government Trustees Bargaining Committee position that class complexity cannot be bargained has been shown to be unfounded. Not only do many provincial teacher organizations across Canada have items on class complexity in their collective agreements, several conciliators and mediators have reported that these items can be bargained in Saskatchewan. Recently, we heard comments from the Minister of Education that they don't want to waste time and resources bringing people into Regina to investigate issues with committees. And we couldn't agree more with that statement. Yet, that's all they seem willing to do in the negotiations process. Bring in teachers and, and staff and have the GTBC say no. We would be willing to return to the table morning, night, evenings or weekends but we have to do it in good faith. Teachers would return to the table to negotiate an agreement, but we need a commitment from government that the GTBC will have a new mandate that gives them the authority to engage in meaningful negotiations. Government has the ability to end the uncertainty for students and teachers. Instead, they continue to play political games. They continue to return to their sad old playbook. They attempt to mislead the public, they ignore the majority of teachers' proposals and focus on salary as the only item at the table, and they frame teachers as greedy. Their short-term pilot projects, one-time funding announcements, and any potential increments, uh, increases that are announced in the budget, or even if this goes on longer, any election promises, are all attempts to sidestep the bargaining process and avoid making long-term commitments that would see improvements in our schools and classes across the province. We don't have to look too far back in history of this government to see that these promises to education quickly disappear or are even clawed back from divisions after an election. We will not accept any empty promises. Students and teachers need real solutions and we need long-term commitments to be able to hold this government accountable to funding public education. So today we are announcing a full day rotating strike taking place on Thursday, February 1st in the following areas. All of Horizon School Division, all of Prairie South School Division, all of Holy Trinity School Division, all of Prince Albert Catholic School Division, all of Saskatchewan River School Division, all of Light of Christ Catholic School Division, and all of Living Sky School Division. This will also include Sakoe High School in North Battleford, the Conseil de École Francescois schools within the geographic boundaries of the school divisions that I mentioned, as well as the Saskatchewan Distance Learning Centre teachers who work at a school or a regional campus within the geographic boundaries of those school divisions above. Again, it does not have to be this way. Teachers don't want to be taking these actions, but teachers cannot continue working without knowing that they will have adequate supports to meet their students' learning needs. 
So thank you all again for joining me here today. If you uh, have any questions, please raise your hand and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Alec. Hi, Samantha. Uh, so first thing, can you just explain what exactly a rotating strike is and what that'll look like on the day? Uh, well, it's it, I guess it is a strike similar to our province-wide strike, but rotating in the sense that it only impacts uh, specific school divisions. So actions on those days will be similar to what we saw during our provincial-wide strikes, um, but they are just in specific locations around the province. Is there any appetite or anticipation that we're going to have another announcement of job action tomorrow and why specifically were those divisions chosen? Uh, well, any action or any further action requires the 48 hours notice that uh, we are legislated to provide. Um, so if there isn't another announcement, you'll, you'll be provided with that notice time. Um, and in terms of these, we have uh, a long-term plan and a short-term plan. Our goal is to get a negotiated agreement. Like I said, we do not want to be taking these actions, but government refuses to engage in negotiations in any way. It's not even engaging in good faith negotiations. They're not negotiating at all. Um, and so we we just, we are taking the only option we have left um, on behalf of teachers. But but sorry, to, to be clear, why not have a province-wide strike again why not have an indefinite strike, the one days and one days and now one day? Um, it seems like this is a smaller scope than the two previous rounds of strike that we've had in the province. So why have a limited scope? Why not expand it on the third opportunity to strike? Uh, well, we take many different factors into consideration when we're making these decisions. Uh, we And so this is just where we are at in terms of our plan. I wouldn't say that it is a scaled back. Uh, while it's not affecting everyone across the province, that doesn't mean that there won't be days in the future that do impact others. Um, but like I said, these are the actions that we're announcing for Thursday. Okay. That's all for me right now. Thank you. Thanks, Alec. Keenan? Hi, Samantha. Um, your other job action to date hasn't, uh, hasn't really worked. It hasn't gotten both sides back in a room. I, I just wonder what about this announcement tells you that, that this will change that? Uh, well, like I said, we are hopeful that the government starts listening. Um, and, and so these actions are just further actions to apply pressure to government to let them know that uh, all of the proposals that we have put forward in bargaining are important and they need to be addressed uh, with long term commitments from government. Uh, we have also seen a lot of support from members of the public in our last two days of action, and we hope to see those continue uh, in future days. Uh, like I said, this is government's responsibility. They need to be properly funding education. And because they haven't carried through on those promises of funding education and ensuring all Saskatchewan students uh, receive the, the supports that they need and are able to benefit from the economic prosperity that we're seeing in Saskatchewan, uh, we are, we're pushing to make sure that, that we get an investment, not just this year, but in future years to come. Thank you. Thanks. Aishwarya? Um, is there another round, a round two of rotating strikes coming that could include uh, Saskatoon and Regina? Oh, well, there could be. Like I said, our goal is to get an agreement that uh, sees improvements to teachers' compensation and sees protections around teachers' working conditions and improvements uh, to our students' learning conditions. So we are are taking this action today that doesn't... Um, mean that there are are not future actions planned in the future. But like I said, our goal is to get that agreement. We can stop any of these disruptions at any point. If government were to call and say that they're ready to negotiate uh, and have meaningful conversations around those proposals. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Keenan. My bad did not uh, lower my hand from before. Oh. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, uh, yeah, just to kind of follow up, um, is there a reason why these school divisions were were picked specifically, uh, you know, to be on this first round of, of strikes here? Uh, so like I said, there's lots of factors that go into making these decisions. Um, and, and so we have lots of things that we consider when we look at uh, potential areas to, uh, to impose rotating strikes. But our goal in the end is to get back to the table. We want government there. Uh, we want to be having these conversations. Uh, and so these are just the school divisions that we've selected at the time. 
Is there a reason it was it was decided to you know implement these rotating strikes rather than say cut extracurriculars or do something like that as your next uh, step in job actions here? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, we've considered all of the possible actions that we could take right from another provincial wide strike, as we've seen in the past, uh, extending those days or right to the the withdrawal of. Uh, voluntary services. And this is the action that we've chosen uh, in, in the hopes that government starts taking this seriously and starts coming to the table ready to negotiate around all of the proposals that teachers have brought forward uh, as a priority. Well, I think there's some in the chat. Sorry, my window isn't set up nicely for this. Uh, so do you have any estimates on the number of students this affects? So we do have rough estimates on how many students this is impacted. So approximately 35,000 students are impacted uh, by this date on, on uh, February 1st. Uh, but you could ask SSBA, they would have a better number in terms of what that is. From my experience though, and like I said, while these we know that these actions are disruptive to individuals' days, like I said, we do not wanna be taking these actions. Unfortunately, though, I, 10 years of underfunding in education where students are getting fewer and fewer supports that they need has really left a generation of kids uh, impacted by the state of our public education system. So this year, uh, it's about 190,000 students who are in our classes, not getting the supports that they need. We have more students coming into school next year. We need to know that every child in Saskatchewan is going to start seeing improvements to their learning conditions. Um, the second question also, you mentioned promises to education funding or programs have been announced in the past, which don't come to fruition. Do you have an example? Um, so like I said, we have seen from this government uh, make election promises to improve the funding in education and start to make a real investment. Um, most recently, those have not come to fruition in that the government doesn't understand the scope of the problem. We had a massive rally in April and only then did the government respond uh, and put $40 million into public education. Even when the Fraser Institute is saying there's a $400 million gap uh, from where we were funded at when we were first in the country to where we are now. And we're down to eighth in the country for per student funding um, from across uh, the, the Canadian provinces. Also, we saw a reduction to the education budgets in um, 2017, I believe, where there was $54 million that was taken out of the education system. Um, and that left many school divisions struggling. And year after year, we see funding increases that are below the rate of inflation, that are below enrollment growth. Um, and so we need to have assurances that this government is going to uh, fulfill their commitments and, and fund education properly and support our students. Josh? Yeah, is, uh, do you have a, a kind of even a ballpark figure of what the numbers of uh, STF members this uh, action on uh, February 1st will represent or the percentage of the STF? So there's about 3,000 STF members that this action will impact. And so that would be uh, roughly 30% off the top of my head uh, of our teachers across the province. Um, and and this is more of a, a, a blue sky question, I guess. But uh, you know, I this if this keeps going the way it's going in some form or fashion, and we get to budget day, and everything that you know your membership is seeking, or uh, or enough of it is wrapped up, uh, you know, in a, in a bow under that that tree, is there a world where you know the the union would move on from this if if the government decides to? Uh, you know, take a lot of measures, which which you would find satisfying uh, in the in the next budget. So we don't understand why the government is so hesitant to make long term commitments. And like I said, we have seen where government has a, a pre election budget and it looks really good, and then the next year everything is cut back, uh, or those investments are gone and even clawed back from school divisions. So we need to ensure that regardless of uh, who the governing party is. Uh, that they are are committed to investing in our kids because to me that's the best investment that we can that we can make in Saskatchewan here. And just to clarify though, sorry, I was doing the numbers quickly in my head and I'm a math teacher. I should have been better at this. It's between 20 to 25 percent of our members in Saskatchewan. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Alec? 
I, I'm just hoping that you can address some of the discussion around salaries being the keystone element of this round of bargaining we've seen on on Twitter, Minister Cockrell talking about the 23.4, I believe, uh, percent increase that uh, teachers are seeking. I was hoping you could just address the wage ask from teachers and why specifically you're, you're pegging it to CPI. Uh, well, teachers have been uh, impacted for a number of years by their salaries, not keeping pace with inflation. And this was a message that we heard across the province that we needed assurances that we were not going to have our salaries further eroded by salary increases that were below the rate of inflation and CPI. And so that's where that tie come from. Uh, but again, these are opening proposals. Um, we are ready to negotiate on any of these items, uh, but we need government willing to negotiate on them too. Um, and again, I think I've said it before, but uh, for those that aren't aware, MLAs do have a tie to CPI in their salary increases. So uh, if it makes sense for MLAs to have a tie to CPI, there are other teacher organizations across Canada that has ties to CPI. Um, we need to make sure that we are able to um, properly uh, compensate the teachers here in Saskatchewan so that they can be successful uh, and want to stay here in Saskatchewan, as well as recruit others to come. We do have a shortage of teachers um, in many areas of the province. Well, hey, you touched on uh, what was going to be my second question. So thank you very much. That's all for me. Thanks, Alec. Josh? Uh, no, I didn't lower, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so not seeing any other hands up. I am uh, always happy to answer questions after the fact. If something uh, comes to mind or you want clarity on anything, please feel free to reach out to the Federation and we'll um, be able to provide you with more information or be able to uh, provide a time where I can answer additional questions if there are any. But again, just wanting to thank everyone for your support. Um, obviously, at media that is here, thank you for your time um, and your efforts in making sure that uh, teachers' messages are, are out there and, and the members of the public understand them, as well as all of the parents, students, um, members, uh, business members or owners in Saskatchewan, uh, religious groups. I know there's been a ton of support uh, for teachers over the last couple of days of action that we had. Um, and, and a lot of outpour to government. It is time that they start listening. It is time they start investing uh, and making long-term commitments for our kids. Because as I said before, um, I am a mom and there is no better investment that I can make uh, for, for my kids than their education. And I know that education is the key to a successful future here in Saskatchewan. So again, thank you for your time uh, and, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.